it's been a while since I last recorded, man. Let me ask you, does it look like I lost weight by chance, huh? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> if it does not, that's because I gained six pounds. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> peeps, welcome back to Full Circus. My name is Tristan Sartors, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. So, guys, I really mean this when I say it. I hope you're having a excellent time right now. And I mean this so genuinely, more than I ever have, because the truth is, I'm not, all right? I have a phenomenal headache right now. Now, usually you don't attribute the word phenomenal to a headache, but here's the thing about a headache. It really only has one goal in mind, no pun intended. One thing it's setting out to do, one thing to accomplish, one thing to get done. And what it wants to get done is make me suffer, and it's doing a phenomenal job at that. I feel like I have a discotheque band just practicing away in my brain. Okay, it's loud, it's annoying, and it won't stop. Can we take a break and eat an Ivory Rice crispy tree? Now I think we gotta keep on practicing for a new album release. Okay, well, oh, jeez, dude. It's not comfortable, okay? Now, I admit, the bright lights, the camera, the show, the loud talking, by yours truly, doesn't help at all, okay? It's not the best situation to be in when you have a migraine, but I'm here nonetheless. And I tell you, all of this really not as some sort of disclaimer or form of damage control to be like, hey guys, if the episode isn't that great, it's because I'm not feeling that great. No, dude. I tell you this so that you put a little mental asterisk next to this episode as we watch it, that by the end of it, you go, what the frick? Did he knock it out the park? How? Right? That's what I want you to think. I want you to know that this episode is going to be a slam dunk of comedy, and we're about to witness something great. Okay? We're going to have a fantastic time, so buckle up, Jack. It's going to be awesome. Put that little asterisk. Know that I'm suffering. Know that I'm persevering, and let's enjoy ourselves. Okay? Perseverance. That's the word of the day. I can't spell it, but it is the word of the day. Scratch that. P-E-R-S-E-V-E-R-A-N-C-E. -E -E. Harvard, where are you at? So, <laughs> anyways, amidst all the pain, all the struggles, the trials and tribulations, we are getting this thing done, and I'm happy to be here with you guys truly, okay? Because I don't know how much pain would keep me from doing this show. I have yet to experience it. We've done it with COVID. We've done it with headaches. We've done it with broken fingers. We're always here to have a great time. And that is just what we will do together. So it'll be interesting. And outside of just the headache, it's interesting for another reason in that I haven't recorded in a while. Okay. Now the last episodes, okay, three of them were recorded over the span of like four days. So I went bang, 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 bang. And they were great because I was feeling sharp. You know, you go right from practice, right to the big game, to the encore. And you're just in it. You're in a groove, right? And it was nice because I was receiving compliments and praise. Lots of great things were bestowed upon me. And I was very happy and thrilled that I could go, thanks, guys. That's great. Okay, as I was off doing my business. But now that I'm here again on the flip side, okay, it's been weeks since I've recorded. And I'm not this guy. I'm not in the group. I'm not as sharp. This guy was firing on all cylinders of the comedic vehicle, comedic chops, humor, wit. It was all there. Now, I'm trying to just find the groove, get back into it. People always say, when you're trying to pick up any skill or talent that you have dropped prior, they go, hey, don't worry about it. It's just like riding a bike, right? I disagree. I think riding a bike is the only thing that is like riding a bike. This is like trying to record a podcast when you haven't done one in a while. Sometimes the analogy is just the thing you're doing. And this is what we're doing. We're doing the analogy. It's uncomfortable. It's not easy, right? It's like trying to ride a bike, except for there's training wheels, maybe not both, maybe just one. I'm kind of just going in circles. I'm hoping someone will hold the back of the seat and say, no, I won't let you go. And I go, are you sure? And they say, yes, of course. And they'll push me off and hopefully we will not land in the bushes. But, you know, that's life. <laughs> I don't know. So, yes, I am. I'm very thrilled to be back here. Nonetheless, I think we'll find our groove in a good five, ten minutes, whatever it is. Like I said, 
We're going to knock out the park because that's what we do here on the show. You and me, this conversation, us together, we have fun, right? It's not always about professionalism. Sometimes we're just going to have fun, and that's the way that it is. So without further ado, let's have fun together. I'm happy to be back here, not just on the podcast, but in my own home, dude. Let me say this, man. Let me say this. For the past couple weeks, watching all these dogs and stuff, I have been living life like a husband on the brink of divorce, okay? Lots of couch sleeping going on. And <laughs> people always ask, hey, why are all the dogs sitting? Why are the dog watching? Do you love dogs? It's a canine thing. Love pets, love animals, love being somewhere else. I'm going to be honest, okay? This is the real truth. The reason I accept so many of these dog sitting jobs is the thermostat, okay? Now, the thermostat here at our house, I have never had control of, and they like it icy cool, right? I don't know what it is about my parents, but they like to... Keep it a good 30, 31 degrees maybe. If it raises above 40 degrees out, we shut the doors and crank the AC up. Can't let that hot air get in here. You know, we have doors, windows, open, everything. Dead of winter. Doesn't matter. It's the Ice Age. You look around and you see Manny, Diego, Sid the Sloth. They're roaming about. It's cold, okay? I can't survive here. That's the reason I go to these dog sitting places is because I just want to feel comfortable. I just want to be warm for a minute. The saying, it'll be a cold day in hell, comes from the idea that if my parents got a tour of the realms, like, so this is hell, and they went, oh, it's a bit warm. You mind if we just tickle this down? That's what they would do, and it would be cold. If my parents visited hell, it would be freezing. So even the saying, go to hell, I'm like, dude, is it warmer than here? I'm, is this not hell? I don't know why hell is warm to begin with. Why is it a tropical climate? This feels like hell to me, dude. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. It's cold. So that's the way it is, man. I like being some other places because I can crank it to a, just a hot 67 degrees. Oh, man. There's something to be said about being comfortable. When I go to these places, I'm productive. I get stuff done. Right. Think about your worst situation, whether it's rain or snow or the desert or this. OK, the ice. And just trying to get out of bed in the morning, just really get your it's just hard, dude. It's hard. Right. It, maybe it's the rain. Maybe it's the horrible sunshine. I don't know what it is. A monsoon, a hurricane, whatever your thing is that you just fear the most. That's where I'm at right now. And it's hard for me to get stuff done. But when I step outside of that, when I can just breathe without it turning into snow, <laughs> I'm very productive. So that's why I go and I accept these jobs and I had a great time. And I I went to this house and that's the first thing I wanted to do, dude. I wanted to go fiddle with that AC. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it immediately. And this was the house with the, the two dogs and the cat and the cat that was actually like kind of like a dog. And it was interesting, dude. I, there was a lot of stuff to go through and we have a lot of stuff to cover. So first things first, when I was getting the instructions and there was a laundry list of things I needed to do, she threw in this one little detail that when you let the dogs out, go out there with them at nighttime because there's coyotes. <laughs> uh, coyotes? What? Okay, we go out with the dogs, make sure they don't get eaten by coyotes. Now, of course, I said yes, no problem, that's fine. But let's be honest, okay, if I go out there and a coyote get your dog. Coyote got your dog. I'm not chasing down the coyote. and go, hey, put that. I'm not Batman. What do you want me to do? It doesn't make a diff whether I'm out there or inside. And even if I'm at the door, if I see a coyote lurking onto the lawn and the dogs are right there, the dogs get one. Hey, whoosh, get inside. And if they don't come, I'm locking the door, okay? I can't, what, what do you want me to do with a coyote? So anyways, I said, yes, I'll fend off the coyote. I'll go out there, okay? We'll tussle, we'll get this thing on. I will not let a coyote take care of your dog, okay? Never, not on my watch. Dude, coyote, bobcat, wolf, whatever it is, I'm not fighting it off. Who do you think I am, an Avenger? So, <laughs> That were the, the instructions that they gave me. And so it was interesting staying there because I just really couldn't sleep, man. And they had these leather couches, dude. Now, the thing about leather couches is that they look nice in photos, right? Put them in a house, put them in a car, 
looks nice to just, you know, look at. But to stay on leather, it's a conductor of temperature. Whether it's cold or hot, it just, it is, right? I like a nice felt cotton cushion, whatever it is. Okay. Leather sucks. I don't like it at all. So they have these garbage leather couches. Again, high class, luxurious, looked nice, terrible to sleep on. So I'm trying to sleep on this godforsaken couch and I can't fall asleep. It's like 11 PM or so. And I get up because it's, it's so cold in here and the couch is freezing over. So I go to wander around this huge mansion of a house and I'm checking the east wing to the west wing, trying to find the AC unit. Okay. So I'm passing by people I'm like, Hey, do you have you seen the AC? And they're like, Oh no, we're just heading back to our part of the village. They're so, it's so big. Okay. So I'm wandering around here genuinely for about 25, 35 minutes. Eventually there's this like part in the wall that there's a hidden room. I guess I stumble on there, find the AC unit in like some back corner of the house. I crank that thing up, right? 67, 68 degrees. And it's like a sauna to me. I'm so warm and toasty. And I lay down again, the couch is still uncomfortable, but I'm about to get some sleep. Okay. However, I noticed some other stuff. Okay. The other things I hadn't picked up on before there were ambient lights all about. Now, the thing about these lights is that they're never like on the same switch. Okay. So I see one over here. I turn that off. I see some other deck lights. So I jog like half a mile over to this side of the house. I'm trying to turn these things off. Can't figure out how to do it. Eventually I just MacGyver the curtains and the blinds and I just kind of try and shut it out as best as I can. Now in between this from trying to sleep to getting up to the AC to get into the lights, it's like 40 minutes. I try and get that deep slumber. I'm like, I can't fall asleep. And I'm trying to figure out what is it? Okay. I go try and fix that problem. So now it's about like 1 AM. Okay. And I'm trying to drift off. And as I'm doing that, I hear this stupid cat. Okay. Now this cat, he's a silly little goose. He's like a dog. And I thought it was cute at first, but what do cats like to do? Find a corner, a closet and just sleep the day and the night away. Cats are great in that sense, but this cat thinks he's a dog. He does not sleep. So he's still just jingling around the house and I hear a noise. Okay. In the other room, as I'm trying to fall asleep, I get up, I find the lamp. He freaking knocked over a lamp. All right. So I set the freaking thing back. I'm like, what did you? How? Okay. Whatever. And then I, I go to start walking away and I turn around and I see him. He's reaching back up for the lamp and I put a video in here. What are you doing? Uh oh. No, no. I'm like, what are you doing? He keeps grabbing the lamp. It knocks it down. Shades falling off, knocking books off the shelf. I have to put this lamp in a closet. I have to take this lamp away from the cat. Okay. I don't, what, I don't know. I don't know what he wanted. If you're looking for explanation, I don't have it. I had to hide the lamp from this thing. So again, this reset my clock. It's going to take another 40 minutes for me to wind down, get the thoughts to slow because I'm running, dude. I am basically the discotheque in my brain, the headache. I'm just never shutting up. You need gotta practice, gotta make noise. So it takes a long time for my brain to be like, all right, we'll stop. And that's that 40 minutes wind down. And as I'm doing it again, we're about, I don't know, two 30 or so. And I begin to drift off. Okay. And I probably fall asleep for 30 minutes or something. I wake up just after 3 a.m. and I have like a little itch on my face. You know, when you feel like you're going to sleep, like, ah, it's, what, what the frick is that? But when I do that and I move my hand to my face, I touch something. Okay. And my eyes shoot up. What the? <gasps> I grab my phone. I'm shining light. What the frick? I'm tossing blankets around. There were two spiders on my pillow. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, smash, 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 destroy, toss it, cushions. I kill the freaking things. Hearts racing. I don't have arachnophobia, but I just don't like them. And I certainly don't like spiders by my mouth. I kill these things again. It's like 3.30 a.m. Hearts racing. Reset. It's going to take way longer than 40 minutes for me to wind after down this one. So, geez, man, I hated that. I was scared. I was very upset and uncomfortable. So I'm laying back. Lights are off. It's finally warm. Cat is quiet, lamps put away, no more spiders, I'm gonna rest. I look up at the ceiling and I see there's like a freaking balloon tied, but in my head I'm like, is that a spider nest? I don't know, it's not, don't worry, but that still was running through my brain. It took me a long time to fall asleep. So now it's about 4.30 and I have only slept that 30 minutes after the lamp thing. 
and immediately there's like a train far off in the distance and these dogs live here i assume they hear the train all the time but nevertheless they go hur, 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 hur. they start barking they get up one dog wakes up the other dog the other dog wakes up the cat the cat's like i was looking for the lamp what are we doing stuff <laughs> so they start making noise and jingling around i'm like oh my gosh and you know about pets dude they don't listen to reason so i'm telling them it's just a train it's noise it's whatever let's go to sleep they don't want to do that so, long story short, it's about 5, 5.30 a.m. Okay, a long time has passed. I am not falling asleep that well. And really putting it through the paces, okay? I've been really getting frustrated here because that feeling of just every time I'm so close, I'm snapped awake. Not this time. Everything's taken care of. I got the dogs locked up with me. Lamps away. It's dark. No spiders. We're going to sleep. Right on the cusp again, dude. I hear in the background, somewhere in the house. I snap open again, but with ferocity in my eyes. I'm like, what the frick is this? I don't know the sounds this house makes. I try and wait just for a minute, open it some sort of weird timer or whatever. Minutes go by. I'm like, oh, crap. Okay, here we are. I'm getting up. Dogs get up. They're excited. This We're going to go get the day. I go to find the freaking noise. It's a walkie-talkie, right, by this pile of mail. It says low battery. That's why it's beeping. Beep, beep, beep. Now, I try to turn this thing off. But where the power button is, there's a little slash. It says call on it. I tap it once to try and turn it off, hoping that's going to be the one. Beep. Now, this neighborhood, I fear, has walkie-talkies spread out. I'm like, am I just calling everybody at freaking 6 a.m.? So, <laughs> so I turn it off. It's still on, but I turn off the call. I try and put it in the drawer. I'm like, okay, can I still hear it? Nope. Take it down the hall. I go back. I can't stop, dude. So I take it to the furthest corner of the house I can find. Wrap it in a pillow. Shove it in a drawer. Like a time bomb. Like, shh, 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 shh. It's just quiet this point that I return to my slumber right 6 30 6 45 a.m I can I can salvage this I can get some sleep I do somehow without even another 40 minutes pass I just nod right off and I wake up eight minutes later to my alarm clock Looney Tunes hey by the way you have to give them food at 7 a.m I'm mad, okay? I've got no sleep. My head's pounding. Dogs are excited. This is when we get our food. So I get up to go and give them their food. What I did not realize was that by removing the lamp that this cat wanted to play with so desperately is that I apparently had invited him to new avenues of mischief. So on the counter, she had pre-measured all these little bags of food for each meal over the course of my stay. So I went there to go and grab their quick little thing, and I'm going to go back to bed, right? I approach the counter. Nothing's there. This cat had <laughs> tore holes in the back, knocked the food all over the floor, had eaten a lot of it, thrown up on the floor. I'm, I'm so mad, dude. I'm, I haven't slept at all. I'm looking at this cat. I thought he was adorable, like he was a little dog. I'm thinking, I might want a cat. Nope. All gone. I don't want a cat. I don't even want to see a cat. I don't even want to know cats exist after this little guy. So I take my time. I'm cleaning it up. Eventually, the dogs are just waiting. Ah, we're going to get our food. I'm like, yeah, event maybe. So eventually, I clean it all up. I put it into the dish. Now, for whatever reason, they don't even care about the food. Okay? They're like, well, actually, we want to go outside first. We want to go before, and then we'll eat. Okay? I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I'm trying to get the dogs to go outside, but at the same time, the cat, again, thinks he's dog. He's trying to eat the dog's food. So I'm like, okay, we're going to go get you your own food. I take him upstairs. Now, she did not tell me where the cat food was. So now, head's pounding, can't sleep, can't find the cat food. Cat's trying to eat the dog food. I let the dogs out, come back. Dogs are gone. Okay? I... I'm in the absolute pits of distress right now. We're at the threshold of hell! <laughs> I'm thinking, coyote. So I run out, dude. Barefoot, it's raining, heads pounding, everything's going wrong, can't sleep, trying to find the dog. Dog, hey, Tucker, Bo! And I'm running around the circle of the house of the property, trying to chase him. And now that she said I can let them out in the daytime, no problem. Don't worry, even worry about the coyotes, they're not out here. But I don't see the dogs, so I'm running, barefoot. Ah, ah, ah. And this goes on 
for 15 minutes or so. And what was happening was the dogs were so perfectly running around the house opposite of me that I am panicking, shouting <laughs> right in the morning, trying to find these stupid dogs. Eventually, I catch up like, hey, dude, you're out here too. You're not supposed to be. And then I bring them in They're like, all right, we're ready to eat now. And it just... It was no good, dude. So eventually I was able to nod off around 9 a.m. or so. And it was just horrible. It was horrible, man. So that was kind of how my whole stay went. Like I really just struggled to sleep. There was always something, always cat, always a dog, always the food, always the coyote, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I had a hard time relaxing. I think the whole time I was there, I probably slept three hours max. And this is the worst part, dude. The last night I was there, I felt like I really had the situation dialed in. Okay, I locked us all in a room, made sure the dogs weren't getting out, soundproofed it, blankets, pillows. Okay, no more barking, temperatures right, leather couch is comfortable, cats contained, collar safe. We're going to be okay, right? Now, the problem is they've jacked up my sleep schedule. Okay, so 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. rolls around. I'm laying in bed wide awake. Why can't I sleep? So I feel a little churning in the bowels. I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe that's it. Maybe my body just says, I got to go poop before I can sleep. I'm like, all right, body. You know what? You, everybody stay here. Stay in the situation. We're going to sleep tonight. Okay. I mean it. I go downstairs. I go in the pot. All right. Now I'm trying to do my little business and I'm just just sitting here, okay? Not tired. I'm angry that I'm not tired. Still haven't slept at all. And I hear this. <coughs> now, I'm used to living with people, okay? So when I hear the sound of someone coughing, I don't think anything of it. Two seconds go by after it happened. I go, holy crap. Hol I'm alone right now. And as that snaps me awake, I hear it. <coughs> Dude. There's never been a better time for me to be on the pot because it scared the crap right out of me. I snap up, dude. Didn't even wipe. Paid for it later. I'm freaking out. Where did this sound come from? I can feel and sense it was coming from the basement. Okay? Like, just dial. It's like It was like, this way. Now, I've never been really scared of random sounds that happen in the house. You know, things just happen all the time. You hear a noise. You get a little spooked. You're like, all right. Could be the water primes. Could be this, whatever. It happened twice. I was wide awake, and what made me so scared was that I have never been more sure in my life that someone was coughing right next to me. Okay. So I'm running, and I get a chair, and I freaking barricade the basement door. <laughs> right? I'm so sure that someone is down there. Okay, so I'm searching the main floor. I go upstairs. I'm searching it. Dogs, cats, they're still sleeping. For the first time, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Whew, don't panic. Don't panic. I go and grab a big knife. I'm alone in this big house with the basement that I have not looked at at all. I don't know the floor plan. I don't know what the situation is, but I know for a fact someone is down here. So I grab this knife and my heart has never been beating this loud before. I am abs I, dude, I can't even explain how terrified I am. I know for a fact that either I'm going to die or I'm going to kill this guy. Okay, so I'm already preparing for the therapy that's going to have to come afterward, like taking a life that's going to mess me up for years. Or if I die, that's probably going to take even more therapy, right? So there's so many thoughts going through and I open the door, right? And I yell down, is anybody down here? I'm looking for people and I'm shouting. I'm trying to wager like, dude, if you're in here, let me know and I'll let you out. Otherwise, I come down here and I find you. It's going to get real freaking bad, okay? And I'm swearing and I'm angry at this guy because I know for sure I'm trying to strike fear in it. Okay, nothing happens. No sounds, no answers. Pitch black. I walk down the stairs with this big knife in hand. Okay. The dogs have followed me down and they're stepping behind and there's another noise in the basement. Head snapped down. <laughs> you guys heard it too. Okay. I don't, I don't know what to do. I've never been alone in this situation before where I feel like my life is really on the line. No one's here to help me. I'm going down here to face my death, right? This is like the ultimate challenge. Make or break. This could be the end of Tristan Sartoris' story. That's what was going through my head. 
someone is going to find me here or I'm going to have to kill a man. So I'm going down here. I'm checking, kicking in the door. <sighs> Flicking on all the lights, searching under the bed, ripping open the closet. I got the knife going. <sighs> okay. Checking whole freaking thing. I open one more door. They have a giant storage room. Okay. And multiple sets of fake Christmas trees. Okay. They have a forest down there. I'm searching through the freaking bushes and the trees. And then I have to go back around the water heater. I'm hearing noises. Eventually, spoiler alert, I cleared it all out. And no one was down there. Okay. But in my mind, I'm thinking, what if he snuck up the stairs as I was down? So all the lights are on. I close every door, lock it, clear it off. I go upstairs. I barricade it again. Okay. Just in case. I don't know. I'm searching all the other doors, kicking everything in a knife. Dude, if someone were to walk in here, I look like an absolute lunatic. I almost killed the cat because he's jumping up in my face. Ah! He starts pulling me. He's like, dude, I am on fight or flight right now. And flight's not there. I'm looking to kill. For real. My life is on the line. That, it was that real to me. That calf was so in my face. It was 100% 3D for a fact. Now, I guess I was wrong. Or they got out. I don't know. The reason this was so scary, besides the noise, was because she also likes to leave the back door unlocked. Okay? Again, rich house, drawer unlocked. There's random noises. I'm thinking, who wouldn't want to sneak in here? Sees that there's no cars in the driveway. I clear out the whole house. Now, this should bring some peace, right? No. All right, it's 5 a.m. Two hours of this has gone on. I sleep in bed. I mean, I don't sleep. I lay down holding a knife to my chest, eyes wide open, waiting. And I know that I heard something, okay? Now, I don't know if it was in the house. I was the, the toilet was right by the backyard, so there was a chance that someone was outside on the property. But the property's big. There would be, like, there's no way for me to hear it, like a neighbor or something. So the only way that they weren't in the house tells me that they were right out the and I left the next day, okay? Got out of there, all right? So, listen, I might not be brave enough to fight off coyotes, but you better believe I was ready to def defend this person's home, okay? That's bravery! I am an Avenger! So, anyways, I was way too excited to get out of there, finally get some sleep again, three hours, stay up the whole night, going into freaking noon or whatever. And I got to go to my next <laughs> dog sitting opportunity. Went to my brother's house, and I was excited because it's a smaller apartment. It's not a freaking town. I could survey the whole area. If I heard a noise, i just look over. Anyone over there? Cool. We're good. So I get there, and immediately I crash for like three hours. I just pass out. Now, I thought this was going to be a big recovering time for me that I was going to decompress and just kind of get in my zone because I'm comfortable. I know the area. I know the space. These are familial dogs. The couch is all right. Again, controlling the AC, getting down to a nice 68. All right. So warm. But the problem with these dogs is that one, the dog needs medicine. Okay. 8 a.m., 8 p.m. It's just a different stressor. You think if I don't give him the medicine, he could die. Right. That's something that keeps you up. And my sleep schedule is so poor, I'm having trouble sleeping regardless. No matter how much sleep I was deprived of, I can't fall asleep here. On top of that, I don't know what they've done to these dogs, but around 3.30 a.m., they get super parched. And they get up and they drink so much water that they got to go pee. I'm like, guys, just stop drinking water, and I want to let you out. So they get up. And they just claw and ring this stupid doorbell. We want to go outside. And I'm like, no. So I get up. I let them out 3.30. I bring that back in. Now, when these dogs wake up, no matter what time it is, 1.30, 3.30, 8.30, doesn't matter. As soon as they wake up, they think it's time for food. So <laughs> I try to lay back down. I'm not feeding them at 3.30 a.m. I lay down trying to get some sleep. Mm, mm, mm. No, no, 
Okay, I will not let this happen. I don't know what their reason the schedule is with their feeding system. So I'm laying there. 30 minutes go by. I'm trying to tune him out because if I feed him, he's going to keep thinking he wants more food at 4 a.m. for the whole time I'm there. I have to make a stand right now. This is where I make my mark that I will not be a pushover to this dog. 15 minutes later, I cave because I can't sleep. They whine and they whine and I give them the breakfast. I give them the breakfast and I fall back asleep. Wake up 30 minutes later, they had breakfast, they gotta go poop. They go poop, they come back in. I don't know what it has to do, but they drink more water, they go pee. Every 30 minutes, I'm letting these dogs out over and over and over again. And they're early risers too, dude. So it's just it's just bad. And I was having a really hard time sleeping. I really thought that was gonna be the moment that I was gonna catch up on some sleep. The thermostat was just not enough to bring me comfort. I couldn't, I didn't get anything done while I was at these places, okay? I couldn't sleep. I couldn't function. Nothing was working. So about midway through my stay there, there was a period, just a nice lull in the afternoon that I was going to fall asleep and I'm drifting off. And could you believe it? My brother texts me. He's like, hey, are you at Carlton's? I'm like, yeah, of course. What's up? He says, I'm down at the shop. I need some help over here. Are you able to come stay with me just for a couple hours? I need some help. He says, I'll pay you 20 bucks. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he needs help. I'm not going to do it. I don't need 20 bucks. I'll do it for 10. No, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to take your money. It's family, right? You need help. I'm tired. It doesn't matter. I'll step up. That's what we do. I go to watch the dogs. I protect the house. I fight off the coyotes. I give the dogs the medicine. I take care of business. I go to help my brother out. All right, so I go to stay there. Tired. It's cold there. I can't control the AC in the shop. So I just, I can't sleep. I don't know what... The matter is, but people and dogs and nobody wants me to hit a REM cycle. So it was rough. I get home. I do manage to sleep just a little bit, but then we go through the cycle again. More food, more water. And just before the stay was over there, right, and I'm trying to catch up again. It's not really that working, working that well. Around 9 p.m., okay, right when they the dog begin to take a little nap dog sitting behind his little crate just tips over bang now i give this dog medicine so he doesn't have seizures dog has a seizure i'm trying to fall asleep i look over he's freaking he's kicking knocking over the plane knocking over the mirror like i'm freaking out i was not trained i'm not a k9 emt so now again can't sleep my heart is racing i can't even think about sleeping because i need to save this dog i'm like hey it's gonna be okay buddy it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay and i've heard that they want to give mice cubes i'm talking to treats like hey you want toys you want to go outside you want to drink more water again i know you like to keep me awake i'm up i'm up so i'm freaking out dude i'm calling them I'm calling them, hey wake up and they're texting they're like hey everything gonna be okay you be calm dog will be calm i'm like okay cool well that's not as easy when you see a dog having a seizure for the first time and is on your watch okay i've said before my biggest fear is having one of these dogs die on my watch by coyote seizure or axe wielding maniac that's hiding in the basement either one makes me feel a little nervous so we talk through it eventually the dog comes down he pees and poops all over the floor not only do we save the dog and he's fine but <laughs> heart is racing i got clamped this big mess again hard time sleeping and on top of that Apparently, after he has a seizure, he doubles up on medicine. Not only at the 8 a.m., 8 p.m., he starts getting 5 a.m. and 1 p.m. The night. So it's just everything. He gets a whole other plethora of medicines. And I couldn't sleep, dude. And that was where it ended. That's where the whole freaking thing concluded, where I, I thought I was going to be so productive. And I was going to get a nice AC thermostat, and I was going to be all right, you know. And, like, I didn't want, even want to go and do these things that bad in the first place. But, you know, you do favors for people. It's like, hey, you know, my aunt recommended me this person. Like, hey, you want to come by? And I want to be nice. I want to be cool. It's like, yeah, it's not really, but okay. You know, I'll check it out. I'll try it once. Do a, do a little favor. Go over to see my, my uh, brother's dogs. And after the axe wheeling thing, didn't really feel like doing it, but it's for the favor, for a favor, favor, I go do it. Didn't really want to go and be with my brother. It's like, hey, for a favor. You know, I go do the favors. It's family. I'm taking care of business, right? I get home after all this here, home, just a couple days ago, and I was ready to crash, dude. And I did. I crashed hard, just fell asleep, 12 hours or something. And 
I'm feeling like I'm really going to recover, finally. It's been freaking 12, 13 days at this point. I wake up to text from both my aunt saying that she has me to watch her dogs this weekend. Now, granted, I actually like watching her dogs. Her dogs are easy. I can sleep. It's comfortable there, okay? Out of all the people, my aunt, that is a job that I actually don't mind. It's warm. It's cozy. Things work well there. But nevertheless, after getting all these messages, I see them like, okay, it's another favor. It's not happening immediately, but that's all right. Okay. Another text from one of our other neighbors, like, hey, we really like your series and we'd love to talk to you again. I'm like, okay, well, they want to try and hype me up. Okay, I guess I know. Another favor. Boom. Accepted. Okay. These are two more things I've accepted. It's a fine. It's not happening immediately. I'll be okay. I got to decompress. Get another text from my grandfather, okay, that I forgot I had been accepted to take them from the airport last night, just a day after I'd got home. Back home, okay? Another favor, all right? I'm doing everything out here. I'm the golden child, cousin, nephew, brother. I don't know. I'm everything. Damn, I'm good! And look, I know I shouldn't feel like I have to brag about all the good things I do, but look, look a lot of people do good favors. A lot of people do great things. Jesus did great things. I mean, he didn't brag about them, but he had disciples to do the work for them. Look, the thing about guys like us <laughs> is... That we just, we, we take care of our own and we want to, we want to make sure people are all right. And we'll complain along the way. Maybe he didn't complain, but you know what? Maybe they, you know, excerpt. I don't know. Who's to say Jesus didn't have his own little podcast, talk with the disciples, riffing a little bit. Can you believe that guy? He held him up. Freaking what? You know, crazy. You know, I'm sure he complains a little bit. He's like, I was sleeping and I got a what? Curing all these ailments? Okay. You know? And that's fine, because you're still doing the work I think you deserve to complain a little bit. So anyways, my sleep schedule has not been great, and I had to go and take my grandparents from the airport, dude. So immediately before I set out to go on this midnight mission, I get a list of different instructions. Like, hey, you're going to take the easy pass, easy pass sticker, go through the easy pass lane, you go through the thing. It's not all that complicated, but these are new things. You know, go through here, go to the telephone lot, go to the door five, United Airlines. I'm like, okay, it's not a lot, but I feel a little overloaded. This isn't my usual system. You know, isn't it always just a little complicated when you do things for people? It's like, I just, I have a way of doing it myself, you know? And it, look, it's not, what you're asking isn't hard to do. But it's just throwing my system off. I just go to the airport, pick them up, and I take them home. That's what I do, okay? I've done this multiple times. But this little thing, I'm like, okay, it's going to be a little more complicated. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it. So I leave there. I try and go through the Easy Pass sticker, and it doesn't work. It's like, hey, it doesn't scan. And I'm like, all right, well, I assume it had to have scanned because they said it was going to scan because I'm driving there to get them beforehand. And right before I leave, I hear the freaking lady goes, actually, well, I'm like, uh-oh, well, can't, I can't back up on the highway. I don't know if they scanned their plates and the cops are coming for them. But you know what? At least it's not my car. So <laughs> I didn't really have a good run in with the easy pass immediately. I get to this telephone lot, just an empty stretch of the highway. Nobody's really there. No lights. There's someone on the left of me, guy and a girl. They're kissing. I'm like, all right, are they waiting for people? Is this their own thing? Look to the right. Guy's having relations of his own, not with someone, but he's eating Chick-fil-A. I'm like, I don't know where I stand. What am I doing? I feel uncomfortable, so I just start playing Fruit Ninja on my phone. <laughs> Eventually get the call. Hey, Tristan. And my grandfather calls me. He says, hey, it's time for us to come and get us from the airport. I'm like, okay, all right. I'm going to drive over there. I go. I get him. I pick him up as I know how to do. All these other steps weren't really necessary for me, but you know what? It was fine. It is okay. But I will say I was very nervous to drive them home because my grandparents, they're very critical people. <clears throat> and that's okay, you know, because you need crit, like, if not them, then who, right? Someone has to be critical. Someone has to do the work that they're doing. I don't know why <laughs> someone has to do it, but someone has to. So they can be pretty critical of, I don't like this, I don't like your hair, I don't like your face, I don't like the way you drive, and whatever. So I'm a little nervous going into it, right? I don't really show a lot of my personality or my talents or me around my grandparents. The last time I sang, just even being a remotely genuine, I was singing just having some fun, just work on some stuff, and I was at my grandma's house. My grandma overheard it, and she walks into the room, she goes, Tristan, was that you? And I go, yeah, yeah, it was. Thinking she's going to compliment me. She goes, 
Sheesh. Don't quit your day job. Walks away. I go, what the frick? What? So, so, she walks away. so this is kind of my experience with them. Again, they're great people, but, you know, that's just how some people are. They got to be critical. And I hope that's not being mean. I don't want to be mean on this podcast. I actually had a dream last night where my Aunt Shannon was listening to the podcast and I had said something mean. I was watching her dogs in the dream and she had listened to the podcast. And I guess on the show, I had said, I like punching mothers. <laughs> and I don't know why he said it. I don't think that's a good thing to say, especially with Mother's Day coming up. So really wasn't not that there's ever a good time to say it. But <laughs> so she was really upset. And she's like, you said you like punching mothers. I'm a mother. I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't remember saying that. And so I was watching her dog. She's like, I want you out of her house right now. I was like, okay, but aren't you guys on? He's like, no, we're coming home. I don't want you staying another second. Okay. And I don't ever want to see you again. I don't ever want you in our house. You are such a mean person. This is what she said to me. So she pulls in the driveway. I'm packing up, putting stuff in my car. And I see her and I'm thinking we're just going to wave or maybe talk it out. And she does a shoo, shoo, get out of here. And I'm like hugging my cousins goodbye. And I'm like crying. Like, hey, I guess I'm never going to see you guys again. I'm sorry. I said I'd like to punch you mothers. I don't even know what it is. So <laughs> so the cousins are like, why are you crying? And I was like, yeah, it's just I said it. And I'm trying to explain. They're like, why would you say that? Like, I didn't know that I did. So it was a whole big thing. And I woke up really feeling like I don't want to say anything mean on the podcast ever. Because then... My aunt will hate me. And I'm trying, again, I'm trying to be the gold in everything. Okay, people ask favors, put it on my back. I can carry it. So, I'm sorry. If anyone hears anything mean on the show, I probably didn't mean it like that. And I'm sorry to my grandparents if, if that was mean. It really was a good time. They're, they are great people. And I like, I like that they're critical. Okay, I like that you're different. Because, you know, if everybody's just gassing you up and hyping you up, who's going to talk Rio to you? Okay, if I shouldn't quit my day job... Who's going to tell me that? My family's going to be like, no, you sound great. You sound awesome. Go to my grandma's like, you suck. Okay. Tell you for real. So anyways, I was nervous. And as soon as I picked them up in the car, I use GPS everywhere. All right. Even if I know where I'm going, I just like seeing the time it's going to take, the miles, whatever. It's just, it's a, it's a habit for me. I pull out my phone. I'm like, all right, grandma, what's your address? Like, I don't know their exact address. She starts talking. And my papa swats the phone out of my hand. We don't need that. We don't need, I know where you're going. I'll tell you where to go. So I'm like, okay, put the phone away. We start driving. It's dark. It's raining. They've been up. <laughs> they've been traveling <laughs> for 13 hours or so. I'll tell you where to go. So I'm like, okay, all right. So we start driving. First turn. He's like, you want to take a lift up here? It's like, all right. He's like, no, I'm. Um, Left. I mean, right. I'm like, oh, okay, right. He's like, all right, just don't listen to me. And I was like, all right, but didn't you say? So we start driving, and it's it's just horrible. The whole time, I'm trying to get into the mindset of my grandparents. I want to drive, think, be like them, okay? I just, I want them to like me, okay? And I feel like I'm taking a driver's test, you know? All right, exact speed limit, 10 and 2, 1, 2, 3, check the mirror, 1, 2, 3, check, 1, 2, 3, check, 1, 2, 3, check, pass on the right, blinker, say following distance, 50 meters, 100 meters, click, turn, you know, like I'm trying to do everything right here. And for a brief second, I hit the speed limit. I've been doing like 55 and a 60. I'm trying to drive like I feel like a grandparent would drive. I hit the speed limit. I'm like, oh, geez, slow down. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, my bad, my bad. They're gripping under the freaking, the whole, the whole time. They're holding on for dear life. Like I drive like this. Sla left, right, left, right. Like that's like how I like to drive. Serpentine, baby. I'm 24 years old. I want to live on the edge. And it's fine. You know, I, they've never driven with me, I guess. But it's funny when you're trying to be so safe and you see someone. Oh, yeah, I found this out. <laughs> saying the Holy Mary prayer. They're doing their thing. So. It really is a, a lengthy drive. We take a couple wrong turns because it was raining. They tell me to slow down. They tell me to turn off the windshield wipers. It gets too rainy. We can't see the turn. He misses it. We take it wrong. And, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of like the old school. Like, I don't want to ask for directions. You know, I got to be doing what I thought. So we, know we don't get directions and we just kind of track. And the 40 minute drive ended up being about two hours. So I left at 930, got home at 1230. Very lengthy process. 
took some wrong turns and you know it was fine we made a lot of conversation or i did they kind of kind of listened it, there was there was a lot of are you still talking <laughs> these kind of things but they were tired they were exhausted and no they're they are very chill and again i don't want to be mean they're great they're fantastic i love my grandparents so it was really cool my grandma she i don't she must get sick on planes or something i think she they must have had some medicine because she was walking kind of weird and kind of dizzy but she was so she was adorable right because <laughs> she was like tired today hi tristan yeah she, do you like my car i was like yeah grandma, I like your car. so she was very sweet and she didn't make fun of my singing at all she even laughed at part of a joke at one point i was like oh my gosh this is great we're making progress <laughs> surely we're lost and god knows where but we're getting close right no, we are close, I think. I don't know. I'm close to them. They might not be close to me because I don't really show a lot of myself. But <laughs> so it was a fun drive, and I was glad to be able to do that. Again, favors, man. I'm taking care of business. The golden boy. That's me. So I hop in the car, right, because we have left a car back at their house that I'm going to drive back home. Very complicated process. Doesn't really matter. Just know that when I hop into it, there's no gas. It's freaking after. Head still pounding. Okay. This is last night. I haven't really decompressed since I got home. Head still pounding. I hop in the car. No gas. After taking all the wrong turns, middle of the night, it's raining. Now, the thing about our family, we live on the edge. Okay. We're not good at just filling up the gas tank just when it needs to be done. Right. Like, eh, let's just play it through the wire. Hopping in any one of our vehicles is like playing Russian roulette. Okay. Sharing you're like, okay, please, please do. Oh! It's me! I gotta fill it, you know? It's horrible. So I hop in there and I gotta put some gas in. It was cool. So it was a very, very long, lengthy drive and getting back home, very long night. So I'm trying to recover, I guess. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. My sleep schedule still hasn't been good. I still have a pounding headache. I got a podcast to do. I gotta edit this. I'm gonna be up late into the night. I got voiceover sessions I gotta do tomorrow. And then right after that, I'm gonna go help my. Like, I don't know. I don't know when I rest. I was really hoping to just be free of responsibility forever, but here I am just solving everybody's, you know, issues. I'm like, put the team on my back, okay? Sartoris, Kokozo, everybody, all the families, hop on. I'm here, all right? And I mean it. I might complain about it on the podcast, but I love to help everybody. I love my family, and I'm very tired, so I don't know what, I don't know what the moral of the story is. I really don't. There's got to be some sort of lesson in helping people, but there's something lethargic or, you know, the thing about having a podcast is that no matter what the bad situation is, is that I can sit there and laugh knowing that I get to talk about it. It's like, well, at least you get something out of it. You know, it's like you put a quarter into a vending machine, nothing comes out, you're bummed. But, you know, it's like I put the quarter in, at least I get like a quarter back, maybe in 50 cents. I'm like, dang, okay, I'm getting something for it. So... I wrote here on my notes, looks like it says, oh, I thought it said toe fart. It said too fast. All right, I already talked about that. <laughs> so anyways, I love everybody. Hope I wasn't mean. I hope my aunt doesn't ban me from her life for saying I like punching mothers. Let me just clear the air right now. I do not like punching mothers or any woman or anybody of any kind. I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. My head is pounding still. I'm going to stay up and edit this and we're going to, you know, hopefully by the next episode I can do some stuff. But you know what? Look at it. We persevered. Stop yelling, Tristan. It only makes your head hurt worse. All right, guys. Go to sleep. Turn your thermostats to the right thermostat. Therm temperature. Okay. I don't know what. I look. It's like I have a headache. I, it's a little caveat. Okay. A little side hustle. A little uh, excuse. Oh, that was... No, it was not an A. It was an A. See, there was one of those eyes. You got to be tricking. Got to be tricking me. Can't be fooling. So, yeah, make sure you're comfortable. Make sure there's no murderers in your house. Get some sleep. Don't ever get a cat. Take care of your grandparents. Take care of your family. Take care of your brother. Be the golden child. Be the golden boy. Because if I can do it, why not you? All right? I'm not equipped for responsibility. Look at me in a Tom and Jerry t-shirt with a headache, neglecting to record the podcast until late in the night with a pounding headache. I'm clearly not cut out for this, but I'm making it happen regardless. I love you guys. I'll see you. <laughs>